In the Mario series, Bowser has taken on different forms and aliases, a giant, an infant, a cat, and a skeleton. Beyond the video games, he's taken on many other roles and alter egos, as President Koopa from the 1993 Super Mario Bros. movie will tell you. But his widest variety of personas were seen in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. This is where Bowser, then known as King Koopa, donned a different costume and alias in the majority of the 52-episode series. With so many different titles, we asked ourselves which one of King Koopa's aliases stand out as the most clever and which ones are the most ridiculous. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and this is King Koopa's Alter Egos, Worst to Best. Before we start, we got some rules. For the sake of this list, we're only going to be including personas of King Koopa which contain both a costume and an alternate identity. This disqualifies episodes like Jungle Fever, Mario the Apes, and Little Red Riding Princess, as in those cases, King Koopa was wearing a costume but did not perform under a different name. We'll also disqualify instances where King Koopa had an alternate title but no costume. These include the episodes The Pied Koopa, Hooded Robin and His Mario Men, and 20,000 Koopas Under the Sea. Next, we're looking at King Koopa's alter egos in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show specifically. Any aliases in either the Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World cartoons, as well as any other outside sources, are not eligible. Finally, if one alter ego is very similar to another one or two, we'll give them a collective ranking. For example, King Koopa has used cowboy and pirate aliases several times, so for the sake of brevity, they'll get ranked together on our countdown. With that out of the way, let's start from King Koopa's worst alter ego and work our way up. Our lowest ranking easily goes to King Goo Goo Gaga Koopa from the episode Two Plumbers and a Baby. Under this persona, King Koopa dresses up as an infant to trick residents of the Kingdom of Youth to jump into the Fountain of Youth and turn into babies. King Goo Goo Gaga Koopa is a case where if we saw King Koopa in this costume and going by that identity, we'd ask him to take a look in the mirror and ask if his plan is worth the humiliation that comes with it. In our opinion, it's not, which is why this ranks at the bottom of our countdown. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show avoids feeling dated by not dropping references to 80s and 90s pop culture and trends. However, in the case of Rappin' Koopa from the episode Bad Rap, the show feels incredibly dated and out of touch. Wearing sunglasses and a gold chain, Rappin' Koopa attempts to extort money out of the people of Rapland, only to be defeated in a rap battle. If that sounds really lame and painful, trust us, it's actually worse in context. Next is Professor Kuparity from the episode The Adventures of Sherlock Mario. This character is supposedly based off of Professor Moriarty from the Sherlock Holmes series. As much as we love Moriarty, Professor Kuparity ranks low for being a very poor reference. Let's catch that crummy Koopa! Not only is his name a weak play on words, but Professor Kuparity dresses way too stereotypically for a villain, featuring a monocle, handlebar mustache, and cane. He's also stupid, which is the complete opposite of Moriarty. We wish we could love the reference, but the poor execution prevents us from doing so. Next is Ali Koop, aka Caveman Ali Koopa, from the episode Quest for Pizza. A loose parody of the comic strip character Ali Oop, Ali Koop certainly dresses the part of a caveman but doesn't act like one. He speaks in full sentences and doesn't portray himself as any more barbaric than he usually is. Ali Koop does have a red snake which he uses as a club, which is kind of cool in a weird way, but the lack of any sort of Neanderthal behavior makes this alter ego feel like a missed opportunity. Every cartoon character has to venture into space at one point, and King Koopa is no exception. In the episode Stars in Their Eyes, King Koopa takes the role of Moon Man Koopa and enslaves the planet Quirk. While concept of traveling to space is cool, and Moon Man Koopa does act as tyrannical as we would expect him to be, we have to dock him some points for such a lazy costume. I'll dispose of those fry cooks. Moon Man Koopa wears a space helmet but no uniform, which is the equivalent of a human walking onto the moon with a fishbowl over their head. If Moon Man Koopa had a more creative design, we'd rank him a lot higher, but as it stands, he's gonna land right here. Now we have Bara Koopa from the episode Mario the Deep. Forgoing his usual trend of capturing Princess Toadstool, Barakupa travels to the underwater kingdom of Aqualand to capture King Neptune and enslave the Mermushrooms. Since most of Barakupa's power comes from the use of Neptune's trident, we're not going to rank him higher than here. He did discover Aqualand on an underwater expedition though, so we can't say Barakupa isn't efficient. 
Have you ever wondered what it would be like if Steve Irwin was large, green, evil, and destructive? Probably not, but Kangaroo Koopa answers this question in the episode Crocodile Mario. Dressed as an Australian outbacker, Kangaroo Koopa travels to Down Underland to steal a magic statue from the townsfolk. Out of my way! The statue is mine. Kind of a generic plot, but Kangaroo Koopa does have a few interesting and funny moments. Our next spot goes to Koopa the Cool, also known as Cool Koopa and Greaser Koopa. In the episode Elvin Lives, Koopa the Cool takes on the aesthetic of a 1950s greaser who takes over Sock Hop Land after dethroning the former king, Elvin Presley. Unlike rapping Koopa, who feels dated due to trying to be based on the current trends, Koopa the Cool feels more timeless due to commenting on culture from a previous decade. Up next is Kingo Koopa from the episode Mighty Mario and the Pot of Gold Coins. While traveling through the Shamrock Kingdom, King Koopa stole gold from a leprechaun named Murphy, which grants him incredible luck and turns him into King Old Koopa, Shamrock Kingdom's new leader. King Go Koopa has an interesting costume, but we do dock him a few points on our countdown, as his scheme of stealing gold and becoming the kingdom's new leader isn't really that interesting or original. Next is the only alter ego on this list that isn't a pun on the word Koopa, Grandma from the episode The Little Red Riding Princess. Near the end of the episode, King Koopa dresses up as Grandma Toadstool to capture Princess Peach. Now, back to business. What makes this even funnier is that, unlike many of the other characters who these personas are referencing, the Big Bad Wolf actually appears in the episode, only to be apprehended by Koopa Troopas for getting in King Koopa's way. This could have been pretty lame, but the cleverness of the writing surprisingly makes this alter ego memorable. Next is Red Baron Koopa from the episode Mario and the Red Baron Koopa. Dressing up in attire similar to that of the fighter pilot, the Red Baron, Red Baron Koopa enlists help from Lakitu in causing radical weather changes to the residents of Pasta Land. Instead of piloting a plane, Red Baron Koopa steals a magic carpet, which he uses for an intense dogfight against Mario. Red Baron Koopa is an interesting portrayal of the Red Baron, but he's docked a few points for relying on Lakitu a little too much in this episode. Bowser was a swashbuckler in the Pirate Land board of Mario Party 2. But before that, King Koopa was living out his high seas fantasies in a couple of episodes of the Super Show. These two personas are Captain Koopa from the episode Rolling Down the River and Blackbeard Koopa, aka Long John Koopa, from the episode Pirates of Koopa. While both roles are different in terms of costume, Captain Koopa and Blackbeard Koopa both sail the seas and steal whatever they can, leading to very similar lifestyles. This certainly is a concept that fits King Koopa, but we're docking a few points in our rankings for Miss Potential. For example, Captain Koopa has a sword in his holster but never pulls it out. Also, Blackbeard Koopa, aka Long John Koopa, is weird for being a spoof of both Blackbeard and Long John Silver at the same time, while not even having a beard. He who laughs last laughs best! <laughs> even though the execution of these personas leave a lot to be desired, it's pretty cool to see King Koopa as a pirate. Next is Koopfinger from the episode On Her Majesty's Sewer Service. Featuring a name, which is a reference to the James Bond villain Goldfinger, and a design similar to that of the villain Blofeld, Koopfinger is a notorious thief who turns the character of James Bond into stone to rob Fort Hard Knox. While turning a man into stone seems closer to Darth Vader than any Bond villain, Koopfinger is still a pretty cool reference to James Bond bad guys. Now we have El Kupatan from the episode The Mark of Zero. Dressed in the attire of a military leader, El Kupatan steals all the vegetables and gold from El Desertland while commanding the minions in his Koopa pack. El Kupatan is so threatening that Mario, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad enlist the help from the legendary Hero Zero in order to take him down. I'm the pin this Zero! Any persona that causes Mario to enlist help from an outside source deserves some serious recognition. Next is Koopa Claus, from the episode of the same name, sees this green villain dressing up like Santa to ruin Christmas by destroying the toys of all the children. Koopa Claus also goes a step further by freezing Santa's workshop to cease production on all future toys. Wearing the iconic Christmas icon's outfit and piloting a very similar sleigh, albeit pulled by albatrosses instead of reindeer, King Koopa's round body type actually makes him a perfectly fitting anti-Santa to spice up the holidays. While King Koopa is mostly known as, well, a king, he has been an emperor a few times. One such example is that of Emperor Augustus Septemberus Octoberus Koopa in the episode The Great Gladiator Gig. 
easily his longest alias due to the several names. Emperor Augustus Septembrus Octobrus Cupa is an obvious nod to the Roman Emperor Augustus. Even though the name pun is pretty ridiculous, Emperor Cupa shows to be a formidable foe, taking over the Linguini Kingdom and their Colosseum to conduct gladiator battles. We also like the small touch of his crown, changing to a golden wreath while wearing this costume. Another alias that parodies an emperor is that of Koopa Khan, as seen in the episode Brooklyn Bound. An obvious nod to Mongolian Emperor Genghis Khan, Koopa Khan travels throughout Snow World, chasing down Mario, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad at every turn. He noticeably travels on an Ostro and has a troop of snippets that follow him. You and your friends are doomed. You know, the plethora of Super Mario Bros. 2 enemies, along with the fact that King Koopa is green, makes us wonder if this character is actually an amalgamation of Bowser and Wart, and in this case, Genghis Khan. Next, we have Judge Koopa and Warden Koopa from the episode Escape from Koopa Trass. Judge Koopa appears first, sentencing Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach to 500 years on Koopa Trass Island. Once there, they're monitored by Warden Koopa as our four heroes attempt to escape from the island. The fact that King Koopa used two separate alter egos to accomplish his goal shows he put a lot more thought into this than he usually does. While Mario failed at teaching history in the educational game Mario's Time Machine, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show tried to balance education and entertainment more successfully. This is seen in the role of Red Coat Koopa in the episode The Koopas Are Coming. Dressed up in the Red Coat uniform wore by British soldiers in the American Revolution, Red Coat Koopa uses an ice scepter to freeze George Washington along with the other members of the Revolutionary Army. So be cool. Okay, maybe it's not a great history lesson, but it taught us more than those awful educational Mario games ever did. Next, we have Dr. Koopenstein and the Koopenstein Monster, both featured in the episode Koopenstein. Even though the backstory and names of these characters are clear references to Dr. Frankenstein and the Frankenstein Monster, Dr. Koopenstein and the Koopenstein Monster are two alter egos of the same character, making them much more akin to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. While Dr. Koopenstein is highly intelligent and the Koopenstein monster is much more aggressive and primal, both forms of this character are quite evil and a force to be reckoned with. Next is Al Capone in the episode The Unzappables. A reference to the real-life crime lord Al Capone, aka Scarface, Al Capone is the leader of the Koopa Pack who robbed the first mushroom bank in Crime Land. The animators went far in recreating the image of Al Capone, giving Al Capone the iconic scar on his face and show him smoking a cigar in many scenes. So long, drain brains. You wouldn't see this in a kid's show nowadays, so we'll give the Super Mario Brothers Super Show due credit in this regard. Up next is Colonel Von Koopa from the episode Raiders of the Lost Mushroom. If you thought Al Capone was a bit odd for the Super Show, wait until you get a look at Colonel Von Koopa's armband. It's an obvious nod to the Nazi Colonel, Herman Dietrich, and the first Indiana Jones movie. Colonel Von Koopa hunts for the legendary Lost Mushroom to wield its apparent magical powers. Our only gripe with Colonel Von Koopa is that we don't get to see his face melt off after discovering the Lost Mushroom, but we're willing to forgive that for an otherwise clever reference. Next is Darth Koopa from the episode Star Koopa. Yeah, long before Family Guy and Robot Chicken were doing Star Wars themed episodes, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show paid homage to the classic science fiction movies. We're going to assume we don't have to point out which character Darth Koopa is referencing. That's a good one. <laughs> While Star Wars parodies are a dime a dozen nowadays, Darth Koopa made an impact in the Super Show by following the exact same plot that his film counterpart did. Before Bowser was a cowboy in Mario Party 2 in Western Land, King Koopa was a cowboy in Super Show. These personas include Kid Koopa from the episode Butch Mario and the Luigi Kid, Climb Jump Koopa from the Great Gold Coin Rush, and Billy the Koopa from the Provolone Ranger. A couple of these personas are based off of actual outlaws, namely Kid Curry and Billy the Kid. Kid Koopa, not to be confused with Koopa Kid from the Mario Party series, is also notable for being the earliest alter ego that King Koopa donned in this show. While the cowboy costume suits King Koopa well, even if the fake mustache is kind of cringe, the coolest aspect of this getup are the piranha plants which King Koopa keeps in his holster in place of guns. It makes us wish more western movies ended with the piranha plant standoff. Next we have Koop Tut from the episode The Ten Koopmanments. It's a parody of the Egyptian pharaoh King Tut. Koop Tut wears the classic Egyptian attire while terrorizing Pyramid Land. 
What's more interesting than the reference itself is Coop Tut's actions of turning the mushroom people into bricks. Coop Tut turned the three mushrooms into bricks. This bears a striking resemblance to Bowser's original plan of turning the mushroom people into bricks, as seen in the original Super Mario Bros. manual. It seems the Belmont family aren't the only vampire hunters in town anymore, as Mario, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad encountered Count Cupola. Based off of Count Dracula, Count Cupola also inherits many of the strengths and weaknesses found in other vampires, like his ability to turn into a bat and hatred of sunlight and garlic. One difference is that Count Cupola sucks tomato sauce out of his victims instead of blood. However, since we're willing to bet Mario and Luigi have a lot of tomato sauce running through their bodies, this still makes Count Cupola a threat. Next is King of the Road Koopa from the episode Toad Warriors. King of the Road Koopa's design is based heavily upon the features found in the Mad Max movies, sporting a blue mohawk, a nose ring, and a sleeveless jacket. Not only is his design awesome, but King of the Road Koopa also drives a really cool hot rod style car, which we wish would return in the Mario Kart series. Make road pizzas out of them! King of the Road Koopa also proves to be one of Koopa's more ruthless personas, as he goes as far as to steal spaghetti sauce from Mario and Luigi. Stealing the princess is one thing, but stealing pasta sauce from two Italians is unforgivable. The bronze medal goes to Karate Koopa. It's a reference to the Karate Kid films. Karate Koopa is one of King Koopa's more elaborate costumes, featuring a karate suit and a black ponytail. This is the only time in the Super Show where King Koopa changes his skin color with the use of kabuki makeup to further emulate a karate master. I love being black. Karate Koopa commands an army of ninjas to go after Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad, which really makes sense thematically with this character. For all those reasons, Karate Koopa stands out as one of the best references out of any of King Koopa's alter egos. Prior to Giant Bowser becoming a staple in the Super Mario game series, King Koopa had a significant increase in size during a couple occasions in this cartoon series. We're talking about Giant Koopa from Mario and the Beanstalk and Koopzilla from Mario Meets Koopzilla both of whom are awarded the silver medal. As the titles would suggest, these alter egos are references to the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk and Godzilla, respectively. While not exactly donning a costume, we're going to include them, as King Koopa's appearance is still radically different due to his much larger size. We always felt Bowser could have a place among giant kaiju monsters, and these two episodes prove that King Koopa could as well. Maybe we'll see Giga King Koopa in the next Smash Brothers game. And finally, the gold medal for King Koopa's best alter ego goes to Robo Koopa from the episode of the same name. This was King Koopa's final persona, used in the series finale, and we can safely say he ended the series on a high note. Of course, it's a parody of Robocop. Robo Koopa sees King Koopa wearing a basically invulnerable suit, making this not only the coolest alter ego aesthetically, but also the most powerful. Robo Koopa was the closest that King Koopa ever came to defeating Mario and Luigi in the Super Show, and for that, we have to award this persona with a gold medal. All right, y'all, that's it. Let us know in the comments section which Koopa persona was your favorite. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters and your favorite games. But most importantly, stay wicked.